Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to an episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're concluding Ravencroft, the miniseries by Frank Thierry and Angel Anzueta, who is the artist on the book, and Frank, who is the writer. And this is uh, really awesome because I've been really digging the series and revisiting it. And I, it's not that I think it's like the most amazing thing ever, obviously. I know I get really excited when I, I find books that I like. But uh, but for me, I just feel like it's a really solid book. I think it has great characterizations in it. Um, I think it's really true to who these characters are. I like the lore that it builds on, but I like the continuity that it references. It doesn't really seem to retcon too, too much, um, or at least nothing too major. Uh, and then also the artwork is fantastic. And I think Frank found a good partner to work with on this because I think their tones match very well. And you got great colors by Rachel Rosenberg and uh, and then a great even lettering. And uh, I know normally I don't talk about letters and stuff, but it's uh, it's an important job. And uh, sometimes just the way words are presented or fonts used or, you know, you can kind of get a sense of how things are supposed to sound or you can make up a sound for it in your head. And I think that uh, Joe Sabino, who does the letters on this, actually pulled that off. There were times where I started reading things in different voices or hearing things in different voices. And I kind of like that. that. And I think that's an attribute to the lettering and the style that is used when certain characters talk. So I liked it. But there's a lot of action because where we last left off, we had Misty Knight and Punisher teaming up. We had them down in the basement where all the unwanted chased them down to or chased Misty Knight down to. And she ran into Punisher and he just started cleaning house. He was killing everybody. And so she gets a couple guns and then her robot arm uh, has three claws come out of it, like Wolverine style. So she's cutting up unwanted, Punisher's shooting them. She's shooting them, and then Punisher shoot, she's shooting some more. And it's just a pile of dead bodies laying around them for sure. And it's, uh, it's really awesome. Great uh, scenery, great uh, artwork um, by Angel. And uh, and he's she's like, oh, my God. She's like, guns, really? And he's like, he's like she's like, how original? And he's like, um, are you the one with Wolverine claws right now? Uh, so, yeah, I kind of like that little banter there. But obviously the stakes are pretty high because upstairs – you know, she got away. She was supposed to be tortured to get information out of John Jameson. So now that Bud, the creature, doesn't have that information, he goes right to John Jameson. He's like, okay, so we're going to kill you, and now I'm going to string you up next to Norman Osborn because he was the one who let Misty Knight get away, and I don't trust him. So we're going to have you both watch this countdown happen. And he goes, and he's like, you know, stabbing uh, John. He's wounding him. And John is ready to give up. I don't know what it is, but something happened where John just feels a little broken. I don't know if it's because of Ashley there messing with his head or whatever, but he's not getting angry at these guys torturing him, and he's not getting angry that this place is going to blow up. Maybe because on some level John wants it to happen, maybe. I think John has one of those, um, you know, he's mentally he's kind of like, maybe I deserve to be punished, but I still feel like he knows Misty Knight and, you know, this Ashley Kafka. He doesn't know if it's really her or not, but... In his mind, he thinks it's her, so I feel like he would not want anything bad to happen to them. So it's weird he doesn't have a will to fight right now, uh, but that also could just be because of how wounded he is. Uh, so as Norman's next to him, Norman is taunting him. He's like, uh, what are you going to sit there and do nothing? And, uh, and you know, John's like, I don't know, you know, what can I do? And so they bring in D-Man, they bring in Ashley Kafka, and they're like, all right, we're going to start killing these people if you don't help. And you would think that would motivate John. And he does get a little angry, but he still doesn't do anything and so while you know the bud the creature is like trying to or bud the unwanted i guess he's trying to get something out of john i mean john he apparently john has the knowledge of where the the jonas ravencroft journal is but john swears he doesn't know so they're just continuing to torture him and they're going to start bringing in other people to torture now and so while that's going on down in the basement as misty knight and punisher are shooting their way through enemies they notice that they've ran out of enemies and they're like what's going on and they go in the next room and they see one alien, or they see a bunch of dead un unwanted monsters, but they see that one unwanted alien looking thing with the brain on the outside of its head. They see that and it's killed. And uh, so Punisher lifts his gun and he's aiming them at, you know, Kingpin who's no longer brainwashed because the, the brain monster is killed. And the and his staff, which is Hobgoblin and Taskmaster and Moonstone and everyone, uh, they're all aiming their weapons at Frank. And Misty's like, look, everyone stop. And Frank's like, no, I'll never get a chance to be face to face with all these scumbags. I'm ready to kill them all. And they're like, we're ready to kill you too. And she's like, no, like what happened here? Like, I want to know. And like, just, just put your guns away. We have a bigger threat upstairs and it seems like this place might blow up. So we need, we have to get up there and stop this. And there's more unwanted upstairs. So we got to get up there. And so, you know, Kingpin's like, yeah, well, we figured out that some brain creature was, you know, controlling our minds. And, uh, and then so we killed it, and then that's when the other unwanted came down here to try to stop us from getting back upstairs. 
but now we ran it to you guys so we cleaned them all out and now there's still the few you know like dozen that are still upstairs unwanted and then we got to go rescue Norman and, you know, John and everybody. So they're like, let's just team up and work together. And so Frank's like, oh, I don't want to do this, but at least I'll have things to kill. So, all right, fine. Let's go kill someone wanted. Uh, and he goes, but watch your backs, all of you. <laughs> so he's still being Frank Castle about it. Um, so upstairs, you know, Norman is taunting John Jameson, trying to piss him off. And he succeeds. And he's like, you know, and he says, you know, one thing I can count on, John, is that you hate me. He's like, you know, and I know you want to save these people. So, you know, the fact that you're not stepping up right now and you're not letting your balls drop and you're not turning into man wolf, like you make me sick. And so Norman spits on John. And I guess hearing all that, John nuts up basically. And he turns into the man wolf because remember he lost that gem a while ago, but he's still been able to turn into man wolf even without the gem as of the carnage series that was going on. And then also during absolute carnage. So He's he has it in him. And so he turns back into werewolf or man wolf, I'm sorry, and bites right into Bud and uh, like about with a minute left to spare on the self-destruct and breaks free. And and then while the other, you know, Kingpin and his staff of villains and Misty and Punisher are blowing their way through all the unwanted outside, it's just one on one man wolf versus Bud and Bud loses. He gets bit on the neck and uh, is bleeding out. And then man wolf goes over and turns off the, you know, the self-destruct sequence and Bud is like, you know, John, I didn't know you had it in you still. And he's like, yeah, neither did I. And then Norman's like, yeah, but that's because I motivated you. He's like, good work, kid. And then John, as Man Wolf, turns to Norman and knocks him out. One punch knocks him out. And he's like, yeah, okay, thanks. Thanks for helping. Um, so then we cut to a press conference Kingpin is, you know, having. Now that the, the place is secured, there's no unwanted there. He's, it seems like he's okay with it just going back to regular operations. And he's actually got rid of the hobgoblin and moonstone he hired them for this one thing to kill the unwanted now that the job is done he wants them out of there and he just has a staff of decent people he has d-man who's healed now uh, didn't die from the screwdriver in his chest because bud we're going to find out actually helped as a way i guess they gave bud an alter uh, you know alternative their ultimatum they said look we can kill you or you can help us save d-man and help put this place back together even though we know you don't want this but you're going to help us. You're going to help us make this a better place. So Bud says, fine, you know, I'll help you and I'll save D-Man. So D-Man is there. He's, you know, part of the staff now officially, like as, you know, security. Um, then you have uh, Misty Knight who's there, obviously still a plant for that secret government agency that we're going to find more out about in a second. And then you have Ashley Kafka as the head doctor there. But then now Kingpin is openly giving John Jameson the role of warden. So John Jameson is now in charge of Ravencroft. He's like, you know, I want someone we can trust, someone who's an American hero and is, you know, has a chance to fight any, you know, curse or uh, deterioration of the mind that this place might give because of all the previous people who ran this place. It has a bad history. We want to change that now. And I, Kingpin, or I, Wilson Fisk, want to be known as the man who changed this place. So John Jameson is going to be in charge and he's going to run the place however he wants to run it. Um, so then you have that happening on the news. And while that's happening, we go back to that room from the first issue where Misty Knight was talking to those secret government agents that had her as a plant inside Ravencroft. So they're talking It's to someone sitting in the chair and they're like, all right, that was a good job. Thanks for succeeding. You got John, you know, reinstated and now he's the warden. So that's good. Um, you got D-Man healed. Misty Knight's still there and now Ashley Kafka. Um, this couldn't have gone any better. Thank you, Norman Osborn. And so Norman's sitting there wearing a sling, you know, and he's like, uh, yeah, he's like, well, you know, I don't want to pat myself on the back, but, you know, I threw the screwdriver in, you know, to, to hide Cell and told him to go, you know, attack Jameson, which he did. And that accelerated our plans. But then the unwanted showed up. But while that was going on, I was able to sneak into where the journal was, which I found out, you know, the day before or something. And I've just been waiting for my, you know, biding my time. And once everyone got distracted, I went and hid the journal and brought it back to you guys now. So now you have the journal that you wanted for Jonas Ravencroft. And he goes, and then my best feature or the best thing I did at this place was I got in John Jameson's head by bringing back Ashley Kafka. And they're like, yeah, how did you do that? The, the government agents are like, how did you bring her back? And he's like, well, you know, we haven't talked about this yet, but we're gonna in an upcoming episode when we do the second part of the history of Ben Riley and, and uh, Scarlet Spider and Kane Parker. Um, when we do that second part, you're going to hear more about this with the clone conspiracy story. But there was this program that the, the Jackal was using. I don't want to spoil the story, so I'll save it for that video. But the Jackal was using uh, that was, uh, I guess it was called New You Technology. And basically anyone who was dead 
or uh, was dying, the Jackal was able to make a perfect copy of them and actually perfected his clone process and and that and with with no like major side effects or anything so he found some of that leftover tech after that place was you know taken down i guess and confiscated by government people so norman was like yeah you guys have connections and i i slithered my way in i found the new u tech used it to make a copy of ashley kafka and now she's there and she's you know she's mostly independent thinking but if I need her to do something, I'm sure she will. But I like having her there um, because, because now she's the head doctor and we're going to actually use her along with some of my other doctors, like the creepier, shadier ones. That Because uh, remember, they did a blood test and it showed that she was the real Ashley Kafka. Well, obviously, if you know the history of Norman Osborn and blood test, he switched Peter Parker and Ben Riley's blood test once and showed that Ben was the real Spider-Man and Peter was the clone when in actuality it was the reverse of that. So, of course, he would mess with some blood tests again to prove that she, you know, was actually the real deal when she's not. So I was like, oh, classic Norman for sure. So I like that setup. And then you have... um you know, Bud, who's been mutated, they're like, whatever, you know, what's happening to him? And he's like, well, I turned him over to some of your guys. And he goes, and my scientists, along with, uh, you know, Ashley and some others that, you know, like I said, I have some influence on. He's like, so in the basements, we redid that facility down there in those tunnels. Uh, we're redoing them and we're opening up those old experiments. And, you know, Bud and his, the unwanted that weren't killed, we're going to experiment on them again. So then it cuts to Bud and he's screaming like, no, like, just kill me. Don't do more experiments on me. So this is his worst nightmare. So it's clearly like, uh, you know, Frank Terry trying to set up more stories. And again, I always feel like when they try to set stuff up like this in miniseries, they almost never get followed through because all these characters mostly are probably going to pop up in other books and get used in different ways. And by the time Frank comes back to write these characters again, they'll be too far apart to you know, to do a real continuation of this story. So I hope at some point Marvel lets him do either another Ravencroft story, since this one's only like a year and a half old now. Um, hopefully he gets to do another one. Now that the Venom movie's coming out and they have Ravencroft in it, maybe they'll let Frank come back. Because I would like to see more of this. What happens to Bud next? What are we going to, you know, when is the other shoe going to drop and people will find out about this Ashley Kafka and that she's not really the real one? You know, how is John Jameson doing as the warden? And how's Misty Knight and D-Man doing working there? Like, I, I want to know all this stuff. And I really want to know what's happening here as Norman's talking to the secret agent group. And they're like, yes, well, okay, we got Bud. He's downstairs. He's being experimented on. We got Ashley Kafka, head scientist that we can still, you know, you know, have some kind of influence over if we need something at Ravencroft. Kingpin's still a part of the funding. So obviously we have a connection there. We have you, Norman Osborn, as someone who's helping run this place on the staff. So, you know, we can always go to you. Um, so yes, so welcome. Basically, now that you've done all this for us, we're officially welcoming you into our cabal, I guess, of people, uh, with our new group called Janus. And so Janus is like these six people that are super villains, or some of them were even good guys, like, uh, James McDonald Hudson. He was actually guardian for Alpha Flight. He was the former leader of Alpha Flight. So he's here on this Janus. So these six people, these government people that were talking to Misty to put her in there, Misty was just like one little thing that they sent in, but secretly Norman was their big play. So, you know, Misty went in to do something altruistic and just keep an eye on people and re rehabilitate criminals. But Norman had a real task there to get the journal and to eradicate the unwanted and do all this stuff. And that's exactly what he delivered on. So he's talking to GW Bridge, a former uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, uh, top security agent at S.H.I.E.L.D. So he's part of Janus. You have Contessa Valentina, who is uh, actually played by Elaine from Seinfeld in the Marvel movies. Um, she's Madame Hydra, I believe. So she's part of this group. Like I said, a guardian from Alpha Flight. You have Malcolm Colcord, who used to be the director of uh, Weapon X. And I think was also a character created by uh, Frank Thierry, if I'm not mistaken, in like the later Wolverine issues, like 160 or somewhere around there. Or maybe it was sooner than that. But it was the, during the Frank Thierry run of Wolverine um, in the early 2000s or mid 2000s. Then you have uh, Monica Rappuccini um, and Madame Viper. And I think Monica, if I'm not mistaken, she worked for AIM and MODOK for a while. And Viper is a another Wolverine villain who uh, was part of Madripoor, and I think she was even in the Wolverine movie, The Wolverine, where she like uh, had like the snake tongue or whatever. Um, so that's Madame Viper. So that's Janus, and they have hired Norman Osborn to kind of be their eyes and ears inside Ravencroft. But now that Norman's cured of his sins, and if that sticks, even after Nick Spencer leaves the book, I want to see 
how Norman still interacts with these people now that he's like a, a slightly better person. Um, I'm kind of curious. So uh, let me know what you thought. I thought this series was great. Um, again, it's, you know, it's, it, I'm not going to sit there and say it's like one of the best comic books ever written or anything, but it was consistently well done. I think it's structured really well, paced really well. I mean, there's a couple scenes in this that I felt were a little rushed, but I understand it's the last issue. I think if Frank had six issues on this, that would have probably been a better paced book overall. But, I mean, not really. It would have just been probably thrown more action in as filler. I think the story that's here really works. And I like the setup. So I hope that Frank gets another chance. And Angel get to come back to this and do another Ravencroft miniseries. Because I really, really enjoyed reading this. I thought this was great. And even though it doesn't tell us too, too much about everything, it is isn't a good setup. Uh, but in, to tie this back into symbiotes just a little bit. I think we should talk about the post credit scene where uh, guards are coming in, they're cleaning up the place. They're like, all right, so a lot of people here died. We need to restaff this place. You know, Janice is bringing in their, you know, their squad to be security and everything like that. So they're coming in, they're taking up the bodies, you know, bringing them to be buried and all that. And they go down into the basement. Um, and that's when, uh, you know, because this is before they bring John Jameson, everyone back. They're like, all right, everyone, the, some of the inmates got away. Punisher got away. He shot his way out of this place. Um, so we got a new warden and everything. So we'll bring the place back in a couple days, but we got to clean it up, clean the you know blood up, the bodies. We got to do all that. That's when they transported the unwanted downstairs without being interrupted, without John knowing. So while all that's happening, you have these two guards that are going down into the, the basement where the unwanted were. And there's a secret room down there. And you see this spiral on the wall. And one of the guards uh, says, God is coming. And he takes off his glove and puts his hand on the wall. And there's a spiral tattoo. And he puts it on the spiral design on the wall. And it opens up a secret door. And then the other guard's like, whoa, what's that? What are you doing? And he turns around, takes a gun, and blows that guard's brains out. And he says, we can't have any more distractions. He says, God is coming. And he goes, and he needs someone. He's like, we really need to get uh, a very important person free of their shackles. And let, you know, and he's been hidden down here, buried in this secret room. And we need to make sure that Noel, because he can see through us, that he knows where this, uh, you know, this body is because he's going to want to use it. And wouldn't you know, it's the, the body of the first inmate ever of Ravencroft, which is Cortland Cassidy. Here lies Cortland Cassidy. May Null have mercy on his soul. So this is obviously setting up the, the story we got. I think we got a one shot uh, during uh, King in Black that had Cortland Cassidy being resurrected. So that episode I already talked about, so I'll put it down below if you want to watch it next, along with all the other Ravencroft videos that we've discussed so far, like the three one-shots and then issues one through four. And then I'll find that video link and I'll put that down as the last video. So you can now from here go and watch that one in case you missed it from King and Black. So yeah, so all this is set up. It's really good. But again, I still want to know more about this place. I want to know more about the stories and the and the inmates that have been here and the, the you know everyone that's worked here and all the great stories that you can tell with this place. I really want to see it again. So hopefully this Venom movie is a banger and makes a lot of money and gets a lot of people excited for stuff that is featured in that movie. And hopefully that'll give Marvel the incentive to go back to Frank Thierry and Angel and say, all right, we need another Ravencroft miniseries because these two are the perfect people for the job and I want to see more from them. So uh, thank you so much for watching this episode. I, whether you agree with me, disagree with me, whatever it is, let me know down below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. But I knew I was going to rant and ramble on this one because I, there's just so much about this story that I really liked. And it was refreshing to read something that I got this much into. But I also saw Frank Terry just having a blast writing um, and also Angel having a blast drawing. It's, it's really a fun and well done book, in my opinion. So if you haven't read it yet, go check it out. Go buy it now. Add it to your collection. And hopefully we get more Ravencraft stuff, uh, Ravencraft stuff very, very soon. So thanks so much for watching the show. As always, hopefully all these videos got up before the movie comes out. And now I'm going to try to at least take one day off and get some sleep and get ready for the movie and all the stuff that's going to come after the movie comes out because even though my work is partly done now that the movie's done or, or coming out um my work is also just beginning in some ways so we have a lot of stuff coming more videos to you very soon as we count down to episode 700 and hopefully crossing 2800 subscribers that would be really awesome too so let me know your thoughts of this down below like i said we'll continue the conversation down there thanks so much for watching the show like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace